Okay, guys. Um, going to talk about XDAI, so nothing about uh, security tokens uh, and regulations. So it's more technical talk. And um, yeah, XDAI is a what is XDAI? XDAI is a first stable um, stable chain with uh, bridged DAI as a native token, and um, it means that it's a it's a new blockchain based on Ethereum protocol with um, uh, with a new token uh, created from existing token from another network, right? So this concept is known for many years um, as a hard spoon when you start a new blockchain and you use uh, existing circulation of another token without um, uh, creating additional emission. You move part of this emission to a new side chain and um, and this side chain gets this token as uh, the token of the same nature uh, or the token of uh, another nature. For example, um, this uh, idea was uh, thought about, uh, let's say, Ethereum, when we can take Ether token and we can move it to another chain and create native Ether token on another chain and use it, for example, for scalability, right? Um, and uh, on XDAI, one token of form of ERC20 um, uh, has a different nature of native token on this side chain. So why it's important? Um, because uh, how we think about this, it's uh, irresistible to use. After you first time uh, try to use uh, XDAI, it's, um, it's very hard uh, to uh, use uh, networks with uh, volatile tokens, especially if you are developing dApps and um, you need um, uh, the scalable infrastructure with uh, predictable platform usage fees. Right, so the, when you develop on XDAI, usually you have um, stable user balances. So like if a user has one DAI today, it will have one DAI tomorrow if you will not spend it. So uh, platform usage fees are also stable. It means that um, you can uh, calculate how much money your contract um, or your user will spend on um, um, on using your DAP. Um, it, it also means that uh, the um, the platform can use um, existing liquidity uh, of DAI without uh, creating um, liquidity with uh, traditional methods like mining or ICO or bonding curves recently. And uh, the platform can just use uh, existing uh, uh, liquidity if this liquidity will be moved from uh, from network to network right the the network itself can be uh, um, set up with um, and set up with uh, um, different uh, parameters optimized for transaction speed and when the network is started it started with uh, um, sometimes people call it empty but we call it uh, with uh, we call it with a free capacity it means that the network is always um, uh, at least uh, at the time when it has empty capacity, accepting your uh, transactions and execute them if they're correct. Right, it means that uh, when a user submit transaction to the network, this net, uh, the transaction is accepted and it's, uh, for, for many users, uh, it's uh, blazingly fast when the network has this free capacity capability. Right, uh, and also the, the, um, the problem of um, uh, full capacity is uh, what we think is overestimated in our um, uh, in our industry, and uh, uh, there are few chains with uh, full capacity, and most chains are with uh, empty capacity. And it means that uh, uh, platforms of these chains and, um, let's say, foundations or, or um, entities which supporting them can subsidize uh, platform usage, right? Uh, when, when you think about this, um, some chains uh, offers um, um, free transactions or very inexpensive transactions. Some chains uh, uh, offers meta transactions where someone is paying for, uh, for, for someone else's execution. And uh, at the moment, there are much more uh, resources, uh, free resources and uh, infrastructures and plant infrastructures than uh, dApp developers and uh, actual dApps uh, which can use all, the, all these infrastructures. Right, so it means that uh, uh, this chain is, um, is always uh, ready to accept uh, uh, new, new developers. The consensus of this chain is, um, uh, is uh, environmental friendly, so it's not a proof of work. We're going to talk about this uh, on the next slide. Uh, but uh, this consensus is proven uh, with, uh, um, with uh, scalability and uh, security assumptions, uh, which uh, is working in production since 
2017. Uh, and uh, the, the idea of uh, having this uh, bridged chain with uh, different types of uh, native tokens, uh, uh, in, in this last scenario it's a type of uh, bridge token, is scalable and secure from 2017 till, ni till now. Right, the, the, the main thing about uh, the consensus is, uh, of, of this exact network is like who, is, who are validators and uh, how this validator, self, uh, validator set is managed. Uh, basically, validator set is a list of validators uh, who are participating in creating blocks of the chain. So this uh, consensus is based on ideas of uh, decentralized autonomous organizations and it's a self-governed DAO. So this uh, network started with uh, first uh, uh, initial validator, which we call master of ceremonies, with uh, a trusted setup. So when the network with one validator is a heavy centralized network with uh, centralized power. Um, and uh, after it achieves the uh, next step, which we call minimal viable decentralization. Uh, this is when the, the network can, um, can be managed by this uh, 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 governance system where any uh, existing validator can propose a new validator for this network. And uh, at the moment there are four validators uh, in this network, uh, which is uh, enough uh, to, to keep a decentralized nature of, of uh, governance consensus. So three validators are required to add or remove a validator. And uh, with uh, four validators, there is uh, at least one validator uh, which can be kicked from the network and uh, more validators can be added. And um, the initial validators who started this network, it's a POA, make, make a DAO, Protofire, uh, in Giveth. And now there are five more applic applications uh, from uh, Burner Wallet, Alpha Wallet, uh, Portis. Uh, it's interestingly many wallets applying to be validators. Um, and uh, MyCrypt and Helena Network also discussed to be validators. So uh, the te technological advantage of this chain is that um, well, this chain is based on the Ethereum 1.0 protocol, so it's compatible with uh, existing um, EVM, uh, and uh, it has a dynamic validator set, but by managed by this um, what we call exclusive self-governed uh, decentralized autonomous organization. Um, the native token of the chain is uh, hard spooned, so it's uh, uh, it can be moved by by any user from Ethereum network. Um, with, um, and the network started without uh, initial emission uh, and no emission at all for, for this native token and with zero pre-mine, right? Otherwise this network will inflate, uh, die on this X die chain side and it's, uh, it's, uh, this, this scenario is, is, is possible but, uh, uh, but will be differences in, uh, yeah, in, um, kind of imbalances and, uh, in case of, uh, uh, mass exit from the side chain, it will not be possible to, to exit from the side chain, right? So this uh, native token is bridged one to one. Um, so it's a, it's a form of atomic swap. When the user, when the user moves his uh, die into X die, this die is locked on the side, on the mainnet side in a smart contract of the bridge and uh, a new uh, X die is created on the um, X die chain side. So this is uh, how the bridge is working. Uh, I think this is uh, the main innovation of the um, of the of the this type of chain. So think about this: uh, like a user uh, can buy a token, uh, die token on the uh, on an exchange on Ethereum side, and after he's uh, locking this uh, uh, token in a bridge contract on Ethereum side, and um, and after a group of validators uh, observing this event and um, uh, each of them submitting uh, a his own vision uh, of, uh, of this transaction, independently from, from other validators. Right now, the security model is uh, three or four validators are required to relay an event. So, when exam for example, when these uh, guys sent a die into, into a contract and this die is locked, the contract emitted an event, and within this event, there is uh, information about this transaction, transaction hash, uh, address to, uh, which uh, locked funds, and uh, amount of coins locked, and each validator observing this event uh, on Ethereum side, uh, wait till um, uh, probabilistic finality of the network, in our case for eight blocks, and after submit a transaction on XDI chain side, saying that I observed this event on Ethereum side. Smart contracts on XDI chain side, after, uh, receiving, uh, uh, after receiving three uh, confirmations uh, from three independent validators regarding one token transfer, um, send a command to consensus of the of the chain and uh, and the consensus emits a block reward 
for the address which uh, which locked die uh, for 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 this event, right? So the, it means that uh, uh, bridge uh, directly included into consensus of the of the side chain, and native token can native tokens uh, can be produced only by external events uh, from the from the bridge. The when the user when the user wants to exit the bridge. Um, he sends uh, transactions to the smart contracts on um, XDAI chain side, and um, uh, w with uh, his uh, XDAI coins, they're burned on um, on XDAI side, uh, and uh, an event is produced uh, on uh, by smart contract on XDAI side, and validators observe events uh, on the XDAI chain side, and, and after relay this event uh, to to Ethereum, right? And uh, after uh, three con three affirmations. Um, uh, three affirmations uh, combined on uh, uh, to to relay burnt uh, uh, X die, the uh, the die is unlocked. Uh, the corresponding amount of die unlocked on um, mainnet side. It's a bit complex when you think about this for the first time, uh, but this uh, this idea of uh, uh, relaying events is uh, is very flexible. So on, on this bridge, uh, it's used uh, in the form of uh, lock on lock of ERC20 token and mint and burn of native token. The same model can be used to lock on lock ERC20 and lock on lock ERC20 on the other side, or lock on lock of ERC20 and mint and burn of ERC20. So for example, if you would like to, let's say, have a die on Tron, right, you can say uh, uh, lock unlock uh, die on Ethereum side and mint and burn representation of die on Tron side, right? Using the same bridge and same concept. So the bridge uh, itself, I think we launched uh, the first uh, production bridge uh, in, the, in the Ethereum ecosystem, um, as far as I know, and, uh, and our bridge uh, for, uh, for, the, for the POA network uh, exists since um, May 2018. And uh, it holds uh, uh, millions of tokens and uh, more than a million dollar worth of uh, tokens. Uh, but this exact bridge for XDA is quite, is quite uh, small nowadays. The market cap of the whole network is around $12,000. $12, and um, this is interesting because this actually shows how the network is used and that uh, the token is not speculative. Uh, the chain itself is not competing with uh, uh, with. Uh, uh, Platform of Ethereum, so it's. Uh, I think about this as a like a temporary scalability solution before we have you know Ethereum 2.0 or or uh, or other extensions to the platform, right? Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's compare a little bit. So on uh, on mainnet, the 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 big problem with um, uh, with platform usage, uh, what I want to um, stress here, is that uh, platform usage is uh, two dimensionally volatile, right? So you have token price, which is volatile. And also, gas price is volatile, right? And uh, when uh, Ethereum uh, price is up and we have crypto kitties, uh, then uh, the platform is uh, very expensive to use. Uh, usually, side chains uh, uh, and, uh, and other platforms can say, okay, on our, on our platform, we can subsidize uh, um, gas usage. Uh, but, uh, well, uh, for, for units of accounts, you still need to use uh, a volatile tokens, right? And um, that's uh, that's also not, not convenient for many use cases, um, and what what is uh, very attractive to developers on XDAI that uh, platform usage is stable because uh, token price is non-volatile, and uh, and uh, gas price is subsidized. Um, the both platforms are what we call um, like um, XDAI chain and our first side chain, which is POA, what we call with uh, minimal viable decentralization, and we plan to increase uh, uh, level of decentralization by introducing uh, new economic uh, mechanisms to, to achieve security on side chains. Okay. So the, uh, the slide we made today, I'm very proud. Um, this is a scale in, scale out uh, idea of side chains. Now basically, uh, uh, what people are asking, what people are asking, okay, now you have free capacity, but what if many dApps will migrate or you know start to use this platform? How are you going to achieve the same parameters that you have uh, now, right? And um, uh, in uh, traditional uh, system engineering, uh, like uh, cloud computing, uh, we have usually two. Uh, different approaches uh, or combinations of them. So one is vertical scalability, right? Uh, you purchased, uh, I don't know, M3 
nano instance on AWS and launch your website, but after you have users, what to do, right? You can, you can upgrade your instance to another instance and basically get more storage, faster storage, more CPU, right, and uh, more RAM, right? So that's uh, usually three um, things which we can uh, modify to, to beef up our node. The same can be here. If we think about parameters of, of side chains, we can decrease uh, uh, to a certain amount uh, block uh, time, we can increase block size. And uh, there are side chains of Ethereum with relatively big blocks and uh, small block time, for example, uh, kind of centralized chain called GoChain. They have 136 million gas per block and uh, four second block times. And you can achieve like 600 transactions per second uh, with uh, single to token transfers. And, um, and it's interesting that, uh, you know, there are some uh, public networks where you can actually see that uh, Ethereum can be scalable uh, on using this vertical scalability. But this vertical scalability has limits, right? Because, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the rules of physics and, uh, and implementation details. And also we need to think that all these type of systems are distributed. So we have network latency and, you know, data propagation and uh, all network effects. Right, so validators can subsidize uh, essential dApps. That's what we implemented on, on XDAI chain. For example, when we started this network, we, uh, as a like, first group of validators, decided that the bridge is the most important part for the, uh, for the system. And without bridge, the system uh, uh, may have uh, like one additional risk for users, which is called uh, exit problem, when users uh, cannot exit uh, their XDAI to die because validators don't have money to uh, relay the transactions. So we whitelisted the, uh, uh, the bridge uh, on the sidechain side, and the uh, bridge is basically free to use for validators. So, and uh, the, the same way, um, some essential uh, applications uh, on the platform can be um, subsidized, uh, and also some essential like new opcodes can be implemented on, uh, on uh, new sidechains uh, of the same type. Think about privacy preserving uh, XDAI chain. On this type of chain, you, you, may, you may have you know, bulletproofs or ZK snarks um, with uh, uh, less expensive than on Ethereum, right? Because XDAI now uses the same guest price for, 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 uh, uh, for, for elliptic curve cryptography, which is, uh, uh, from my perspective, too expensive. And uh, it's easy to understand because uh, uh, it's, uh, it's made to, to protect mainnet from, from uh, types of attacks like you know, Shanghai attacks. So second, um, scalability is more interesting. It's horizontal scalability. And um, when um, we, with, without, uh, especially without shared security layer, so differentiator of our approach from, uh, from approaches of uh, other chains with uh, shared security is that uh, we think that uh, um, we can provide a set of tools and people can take this set of tools and launch their own chain if they want, right? And, and uh, we don't force them to use our security model. But the security model of, uh, of XDAI and bridges are proven and uh, audited. And we think that, okay, each component is, uh, is proven, but if you set it up uh, uh, not the right way, you, you, may, you, you may have less security than a reference system. And uh, we think that uh, uh, can be different types of side chains. And that's the beauty of uh, this model where people can and experiment with uh, their own uh, implementations, right? So first of all, people can use different um, um, uh, native tokens. We, after we launched the, um, the, the, the sidechain with XDAI, um, one project uh, from, from Israel, Colo, they, uh, they, they, they launched their own network, network based on the same idea of uh, bridged ERC-20 to native token, but they used their own ERC-20 token instead of DAI, right? They don't need a um, stable token. They're more interested in having like DAP chain, where the chain is uh, running on their own ERC-20 token, right? So it's possible to run uh, the, the same chain with a um, type of uh, consensus as we run or with a delegated proof of stake. You can run this type of chain with like one validator as a centralized system, uh, one, um, one uh, group of people ask, is it possible to whitelist only one application and have XDAI chain with, uh, in public space, but only like for one company? Um, it's possible to run XDAI chain without, uh, without uh, Ethereum itself, right? So it can be uh, a different platform. So there are many variations of the same idea. 
And uh, we think that uh, this idea of um, uh, double token model, where native token and uh, application usage token is a stable token, and uh, all other tokens are complementary tokens that can be used for very uh, important aspects of the network, like providing security or providing utility of this network. But this model of uh, stable as, uh, uh, native token is stable and other tokens are supplementary uh, will be used by, by, my, by, by many networks. Because it's very attractive uh, in terms of platform usage uh, and it also uh, it's it's becoming more and more um, important nowadays to to uh, like uh, uh, decide in which ecosystem you are working, right, and not compete within this ecosystem, because it's relatively easy to be um, to like to switch to another ecosystem, and uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, it, it will be hard to get um, you know everything within within this existing ecosystem. Um, well, and let's take a talk about ecosystem. Uh, uh, the the XDAI uh, is a is a is a project created on East Berlin Hackathon, uh, with uh, um, uh, but but uh, we didn't hack it. Uh, we just uh, created the, like uh, the idea on sponsors dinner, um, and and uh, it was uh, like a half a year ago. But now several partners already uh, support support this um, um, this chain. Uh, I'll start from a curated registry of DApps. Think about like Yahoo for uh, for DApps, and uh, where you can submit your application, and uh, it will be uh, with uh, with, uh, and you can compete with uh, with other DApps uh, of other platforms. It's kind of hard to compete with EOS uh, and Steam, uh, but it's interesting that um, uh, many uh, that many applications on um, on on the new types of chains uh, can be discovered through these aggregators. Right. It's also important um, um, to have wallet support. Uh, the most well-known application of XDA is Burner Wallet, which was used uh, developed by Austin Griffith, and uh, it was used uh, at, in, at the largest pop-up economy on East Denver Hackathon, and thousands of people participated uh, in you know, buying food and drinks, uh, and also vendors participated in off-ramping from XDA to DAI, from DAI to USD. This uh, effort created by uh, by the community without any let's say, central uh, project management team. So it's very interesting that uh, uh, many partners uh, combine their effort together to bring this um, into this, uh, to this event. And uh, we uh, see that uh, this type of wallet is something that uh, popped up uh, uh, on um, uh, DEFCON 4. And uh, now it's, uh, you know, many people having can try, try this experience, right? Um, and uh, I personally would like to see this burner wallet mode in, in other wallets where you can um, uh, open an existing wallet and have this mode of uh, burner wallet where, you know, if you want to use this type of wallet, you can use it like within any wallet, like incognito mode in browser, right? So now uh, the wallet is supported by um, multiple wallets and, um, and uh, some, some wallets, like, uh, which is interesting, Trust Wallet is, is planning to, to support it and, uh, and Balance Wallet. And uh, one project built, uh, built on uh, East Denver Hackathon called uh, ZDAI is also planning to release and bring uh, uh, zero knowledge transactions to XDAI and to Burner Wallet. The important part is analytics. Our friends from Bloxy launched the analytics uh, of the uh, um, uh, of the East Denver event and after uh, support the, uh, the analytics. And you can see here, you can clearly find where is uh, East Denver, right? Uh, it's uh, somewhere in the middle, many transactions uh, and uh, large amounts of uh, transactions and um, uh, transfers and uh, amount of DAI transferred through these day, days. Uh, but the, the system is, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's amount of uh, centers per day, right? So during the Denver, it was like 100 uh, centers per day. Um, uh, but but now it's uh, it, it, it's not dropped significantly, right? So like people continue to to use it uh, and uh, send XDAI to each other, uh, which is quite uh, uh, good for the adoption, right? We uh, we at POE developed an open source blockchain explorer called Black Scout. Uh, this uh, uh, this project uh, helping to solve a problem of a centralized service in the Ethereum ecosystem called Etherscan where it's uh, kind of hard to, to get the, the same experience for, um, uh, for sidechains, forks, and uh, something that is like, not supported by uh, Ethereum mainnet or testnets. So we decided to build a, a full-featured, uh, let's say, copy of Etherscan. And uh, now we're supporting this uh, for, for um, XDAI and uh, eight more net networks. Uh, and, uh, and 
even support for some networks not supported by, by many other services, like we support Ethereum Classic, um, and, um, and well, wh whoever wants to use it can, can install and, uh, and get the full-featured blockchain explorer. Um, yeah, DAPS started to move to, to XDAI, which is exciting. Uh, tomorrow, Helena Network, which is a prediction market based, uh, uh, built on Gnosis, uh, is migrating from, um, uh, from, main net, from mainnet to XDAI. They, uh, uh, and uh, this is type of applications uh, which uh, attracted by uh, platform usage, uh, fees, and uh, empty capacity uh, of the network. And it's, uh, it's very exciting that um, the, um, the application uh, um, you know, started to move uh, from, from network to network, right? Um, good thing about uh, this model is that uh, we, we're not trying to make vendor lock. Um, and uh, like some other projects which are trying to migrate their apps from, from Ethereum to another platforms, we are saying, yeah, this is a kind of temporary solution. Uh, like everything is temporary, right, um, in our life. And uh, this uh, temporary solution is, uh, uh, is available now. And uh, when people migrate uh, from, from mainnet to, to, this, uh, to this network, they can, at any time, they can migrate on another network. Because uh, when, usually when they migrate their DAP, they already use some form of a bridge and they already experienced interoperability. If they have uh, effectors uh, for, for governance of their DAPs, like upgradability, and they can gracefully stop their DAP on, on one network and uh, run it on another network, then it's, uh, it's, uh, it's easier to, to, to manage this migration. Uh, and then, uh, so we, we expect that um, uh, this prediction market will be happy on next day. Uh, next slide about uh, yeah. it's, uh, resolution is not very good. Um, so it's about future of X day, and it's about future uh, for uh, horizontal scalability and, uh, and vertical scalability. Right. So we are working on a new consensus algorithm, which we, which we call. POS DAO or POS DAO. So POS DAO is a, a delegated proof of stake uh, implemented in the form of DAO. When we analyzed uh, many uh, consensus algorithms, we kind of had problem that um, implementation and reference uh, can be different, right? And if you want to look into implementation and understand the, the consensus algorithm, you have to look into many files and most likely on like native uh, in native code so it, it's it's very hard for uh or let's say for people who want to fork this network to actually deep dive into consensus algorithm change some parameters and launch their own side chain without uh, uh understanding the whole underlying code right so we decided to 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 build a, a two layer uh, consensus one layer uh, can be used uh, any bft algorithm and uh, we are using um, uh, uh, we're using uh, Aura for now uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, added Randau. Uh, and Randau we're using for, for producing randomness. And this is essential part for, for delegated proof of stake. And uh, on top of this BFT algorithm, um, a reward distribution schema or validator set layer can be implemented. And um, this part is actually is managing uh, economic incentive and also security model. Right, so uh, to implement uh, roles of delegated proof of stake, like validators and candidates to validators and delegators who delegate uh, their stake um, on, um, uh, on candidates or on validators, you need some, some form of logic, right? So th this form of logic implemented within Solidity smart contracts, and it's, uh, uh, it's quite easy to read, to understand, and uh, to, to modify. For the uh, uh, for the applications uh, who are interested in launching their own side chains based on um, uh, delegated proof of stake, because we like the idea of uh, uh, double token model where the, this um, uh, the, the native and application token is a stable token uh, and. Um, Utility token, for example, for for the for the network security, uh, utility token is a staking token, right? Because staking provides uh, security for the network. Um, uh, for, for 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 this model, uh, delegated proof of stake will make a lot of sense, and the uh, depending on how important network is, uh, people can stake more and more, right? 
we will launch a reference implementation with a um, with a uh, one native uh, with DAI as a native token and a separate staking token. Uh, but uh, anyone can take this uh, implementation and run their own delegated proof of stake with different staking token, right? So you can run uh, a side chain with uh, DAI as a native token and DAI as a staking token. Or you can take either in a wrapped form and move it uh, cross chain and, and use it as a staking token. So the possibilities are. Um, uh, like a lot of possibilities to, to play with the with the staking um, algorithm, and we think that this is a missing piece uh, in the Ethereum ecosystem to have a delegated proof of stake for Ethereum 1.0, right? Eventually, we're going to have it for Ethereum 2.0, but uh, we're waiting for years to have it on Ethereum 1.0 um, to have a uh, uh, the um, the same the same platform. The, yeah, but with uh, uh, with different economic incentive for validators, and also to have this you know green consensus, with um, um, yeah with with more decentralizations than uh, uh, proof of autonomy, which is uh, our existing form of governance. And eventually, we plan to upgrade to Honey Badger BFT, which is an interesting uh, uh, algorithm which we already implemented and audited, uh, and now we uh, combining it with. Um, um, this incentivization layer. So this algorithm provides uh, censorship resistance, both uh, like external and internal, uh, because uh, uh, in this algorithm, validators are uh, operating on um, encrypted data by threshold encryption. And uh, before they create a block, uh, they don't have uh, oversee of all transactions in the network. So for, for them, it's, um, uh, it, it's, it's hard to um, censor some type of transactions. And when, you, when we think about networks like XDAI, which can be used for, for payments, uh, it's, it's uh, regulatory-wise uh, can be a tricky area, right, if the network is centralized. When you think about centralized uh, payment network, you have to have KYC and ML, right? When you have decentralized network, it's kind of different. Um, but um, uh, in decentralized network, the uh, regulators may ask, do you have a way to censor some type of transactions? Maybe we don't like some individuals or some countries. Can we block them? And Honey Badger provides this uh, ability to um, um, uh, to resist censorship attacks. Uh, even valid, even though validators want to do this, they will not be able because uh, you know there is no possibility with uh, uh, with some assumptions depending on number of validators. Right? Um, the protocol itself is leaderless. So there is no, uh, because all validators uh, in, in, in Honey Badger are working uh, on the block at the same time, it's good that there is no leader. Uh, it's, uh, it, it protects them from, from some forms of attack on, on uh, BFT consensuses. Uh, also, uh, the, the protocol produces uh, on-chain randomness because of uh, a threshold encryption used in the, in the algorithm. And uh, it has instant finality, right? With uh, some trade-offs, like uh, uh, more numbers of um, more number of uh, uh, validators uh, required uh, to, to, to get this uh, protocol uh, alive. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's an exciting thing about Honey Badger. We implemented it, extended the, uh, the original specification to support uh, dynamic sal validator set, that val validators uh, in uh, Honey Badger can be onboarded and uh, uh, removed by the uh, governance decisions. And uh, with um, uh, with delegated proof of stake governance decisions are uh, designed within the protocol. So, for example, when the new staking epoch starts, the validators um, onboard that uh, uh, by uh, amount of uh, tokens they staked and delegators staked on them, and also by uh, uh, randomness, which also participate in, in selection of validators. We uh, we uh, when we designed this uh, POS DAO consensus algorithm. Uh, we designed it this way that um, all pools and pools by pools we um, uh, we think that the pools are uh, uh, delegators uh, and, and validators uh, um, and like all delegators who delegated their stake on a validator we made equal reward bet between them so the the protocol will uh, will prevent um, forming uh, uh, mega pools so that's uh, that's interesting uh, um, in, to, to run and uh, and also it's uh, it's interesting to run in this environment where 
um, like security assumptions when we when we start this type of network, uh, and boundaries of, of risk and reward are like very very small, right? Because uh, we're going to start this uh, XDI DPoS as additional sidechain, and uh, we're not calling it testnet. It will be more like the staging because uh, native token will be bridge die, and staking token will be staking token, and uh, we'll see how this will be interesting to um, to to community. So it's almost the last slide. Um, I have some free die. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, let's play who is the fastest one, right? Um, yeah, you can you can you can you can make your camera. So the idea is like uh, I generated some you know, few links and um, uh, it's a QR code when you scan it. Um, the burner wallet will will open, pop up, and uh, whoever take it first uh, will take this die. Ta da! Five x die. Well, but if you are not the first, you will you will see like loading. So usually, like you know, five percent of people trying. Anyone? <laughs> yeah, if it's not working, then someone else claimed it. No, no, I didn't. Well, but but my designer changed some slides. <laughs> Can be. <laughs> you got it. Okay. Really? But someone claimed it. How did he get it? Really? Okay, ten x die. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, Ta -da. yeah, more people. <laughs> so when you get 10x die, share some with some someone else. Anyone? Because now will be a super price. <laughs> Next one. Okay, one thousand. What? One thousand. No, nah, it's next presentation. But yeah, good guess. One thousand. I think one thousand is over. Like regulation. Well, at least in the U.S., you can only like give away I don't know six six hundred dollars, something or less. Anyone claimed? Okay, da da da, fifty. <laughs> it's the last one. Uh, but yeah, fifty x die, fifty dollars basically. Well, you you have advantage, <laughs> man. <laughs> you you have scan from your from your. <laughs> Yeah, like half people. That's good. Yeah, next time I, uh, I need to put 1,000. Uh, but yeah, uh, what you received is XDAI is a wrapped form of DAI on, uh, on XDAI chain. And uh, if you want to exit, there is a button exchange and you can, um, you can convert it to, to DAI in a custodian free mode. So there is no uh, um, central exchange between you and, um, uh, and DAI. And after you have DAI, you you can convert it to whatever you want on Ethereum mainnet, right? Using Uniswap, for, for example, or any other platforms. Okay, so I don't have more money to give away. So some projects are not giving away ETH, but I'm giving away DAI. Uh, so uh, that's my last slide. I hope you enjoyed it. We have like three minutes for questions. Thank you. Question? Yeah. Hello. Hi. Um, great talk. Thanks. Thank you. Um, can you detail a little bit more how the gas model works on on XDAI? Because yeah. I read uh, it's it's fixed to one gigaway per gas. Yeah, um, it's it's fixed uh, on on validators nodes and uh, and. Uh, Validators can increase it, right? So I can I cannot say that they will not increase it. It's possible that they will increase it, and it's also possible that someone will think, yeah, you know what? I will create a script and I'll just flood this network with uh, um, transactions and fill all blocks. All right? It's it's possible, and there, there are some ways how to, how 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 we can prevent it or scale the network horizontally, right, and vertically. 
So the, uh, the increase of gas price is obvious, and there are some other models. Um, uh, we're exploring the model of um, having uh, some thresholds on uh, like, you know, 100 transactions per user per day uh, uh, without, uh, without any, um, uh, let's say, restrictions on speed. Uh, and after, validators will put these transactions into priority queue on their node, uh, and we'll, they'll, they will feed them uh, based on priority. And it's on validators how they decide when they should put transactions into queue, right? Right now, it's like it's a parameter of uh, like equal price, uh, but it can be increased. Thank you. Question? Question from the top. Microphone. Question. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, what is the incentive for the validators? They get the transaction fees, or is there also a uh, mining reward? Um, yeah, there, there, there is something like as is and to be, right? As is, uh, most they don't they don't have much economic incentive. Um, they get transaction fees, but they are very low, so they spend more on the hosting of their nodes. Now it's a, it's like a community project, so. Pro, uh, uh, validators participating, think about like why validators are participating in a test network like Gordley or Kovan, right, and the same incentive structure. But uh, in the future, when the type of networks will grow, uh, we think that uh, there are multiple possible um, incentive models. So first model is uh, exit fee from sidechain. Um, so when, um, when, uh, when there is an like, on-ramp and users uh, go into the sidechain, uh, they get uh, conversion for free basically subsidized by, uh, by, by, by validators. And when they exit, usually it's different type of users, let's say merchants uh, who accumulated some XDAI. Um, when they exit, they'll, they'll pay exit fee. This model is working in, in many um, payment systems. Think about uh, credit card processing uh, or you know, payments and messaging. Um, so this model is working. Also with delegated proof of stake, staking token will be an uh, inflationary token. So validators will get this uh, staking token uh, and um, will be will, will be able to to you know to sell it and get uh, speculative aspects of the reward. Um, yeah, so this basically two uh, economic incentive for them. They cannot inflate DAI, um, so there is there is no <laughs> block reward for them uh, in DAI. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>